Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today, we're gonna to be doing a weekly meta breakdown for the timeless format, and today we're covering timeless best of three. Uh, so the issue we were having with show and tell not showing up in the individual win rates has now been fixed by untapped. For the popularity, it's not showing up, but that's fine. We're more interested in like the actual win rate of the decks right now. So we'll cover some show and tell decks. Uh, as we do every week, we'll cover best of one, best of three for Timeless. Uh, we also do standard, explorer, historic as needed with all the metagame challenges coming this month. We'll also do dedicated videos ahead of each weekend. So if you're interested in the best decks for each of those weekends, definitely give it a shot. Uh, and we'll also have like gameplay up of various either Timeless decks or like relative to certain events, stuff like that. So we're going to dive into it. We get the data from Untapped, companion tool that aggregates users' win rates. Uh, link is in the video description to get started with Untapped. As well, I'll paste all these deck lists so you could import them. Everything is in the video. And just a friendly reminder, we're trying to hit 15,000 subs on YouTube. We're 19 away from 12,000. Uh, it's free, easy, helps out the channel, as well as likes and comments goes a long way. So appreciate the support as always. So like I said, popularity today is not including the uh, show and tell. You know, we'll take wins where we can get at this point. Um, but it's kind of the usual suspects, Jen towards the top, five color domain aggro. We have Yogmoth, which has picked up popularity during the streamer uh, showcase or like the streamer event by uh, Anurag. They, uh, it was won by Yog. It was Yog versus uh, Spike's Jeskai Breach deck. There's a few copies of Show and Tell that also made it. I was actually a last minute invite to that event, but couldn't get off the time from work, just it's European time, didn't work with Canada time. So I'm hopefully gonna compete in future go like future events. I would have probably played either uh, Grixis Shadow or Teamer Midrange, just something that's aggressive, but has some disruptive elements to it. Um, so we're gonna jump into it. Uh, the most notable thing, like the domain decks been kind of falling off in terms of popularity. We see Jun kind of increase. Titan decks kind of fallen off a bit. And then most notable, Fragment Reality got nerfed in more impacting best of one, but as a best of three card, sometimes sees play as removal. Uh, there's not a huge amount of data because in part there was the new Alchemy set that dropped as well. So it's only March 5th through the 11th. So six days of data, 6,300 best of three games played. And the highest win rate deck, again, small sample size. So it's more just around getting an idea what decks are kind of working. Uh, so this is Miss Min's Demir Control. Doesn't look like there's much change that's taken place in this list. There's fewer people playing like mono green Titan, less Blood Moon decks kind of thing. So this deck here is probably well positioned against more of like the control or like the combo decks because you have a lot of counters you can play through it. Now notably, usually the show and tell decks do play um, the green instance that can't be countered brain fart right now but they have kind of ways around it but still these games are going long uh, your main win condition is orcish bow masters either in conjunction just killing them that way you have the memory part archer archmage's charm to also force some draws out of them you can keep looping stuff back with mystic sanctuary you also have a Luris companion so uh, this deck's very hard to navigate it rewards those that can have like reps with it understand the meta well I would suggest if you're new, like probably get familiar with the format first. Uh, this deck very much requires you to understand what your opponent's doing and how to play around it. Uh, it's not like you just kind of keep board wiping, board wiping, and then haul the Storm Giants your opponent. That's not really how this deck's looking to win. Uh, there, I've seen some versions of this list as well play like a single copy of the Myrex or just an alternative win condition in the mana base as well. Uh, your sideboard is just removal, kind of activated abilities. Stone of Eric is a card that you probably want to start adding to your sideboard. It gets much better against with all the Yogg decks popping up. This card shuts off the sack, so they, they just get exiled. You get some value there, but you get some disruptive elements. Uh, Demonic Tutor can basically be brought in, and it serves as extra copies of any of your sideboard cards. And you kind of take it from that avenue. Next deck is... Rakdos Burn Shadow. So this one's actually kind of an interesting one. So it's 77% win rate. It's basically no Bowmasters, 
it's the burn shell, but you have access to Scourge of the Skyclaves. You have access to Death Shadow included in there as well. Uh, you have some Pain Lions to get you some value in terms of managing your life total, your swamp, your mountain kind of mixed into there as well. The one thing I would probably say is 21 Lions is a lot for this deck. Usually, like, you could probably forego down to even, like, 19. Uh, play a couple extra cards. I would also say I don't love the full four of Ragavans in a Bowmaster format. I would. I, I know some folks in the like various Shadows lists have also tried Stalactite Stalker. Just kind of survives the Bowmaster, gets you a little bit more value. I would look to probably trim on the number of these. Again, I would probably still play Bowmaster in the list. Uh, you could probably like trim two of these, trim two lions, play the Bowmasters, and then you, you're you're golden. Uh, Lurus Companion, your sideboard's got just more hand hate, a braids as just catch all removal, some artifact hate, roiling vortex for like um, show and tell, searing blood is more removal. The braids are, I would probably put it towards the lower end of reasonable removal spells. I would still probably bring some unlicensed hearse, I would still bring in some uh, Stone of Eric's. Maybe go blank as an option as well. Uh, you could even look at something like Fatal Push. Uh, you can look just some of the black based removal to get rid of bigger things. There's a couple different options you can kind of play. I think a braid's kind of out of place in the format. We then go to five color domain zoo, uh, 76%. So this version here, you're leveraging a lot of the stubborn denial, which helps, as well as leyline binding. So Eight cards that help in the show and tell matchup. You have an aggressive kind of slanted deck. Uh, this version splitting Ragavan and Deathrite Shaman. Interesting to see only three bolts. Uh, you'll sometimes see one copy of NT, sometimes two. Uh, some copies of Breakout as well to cheat into play. This version is on the Minsk, which you don't always see in the main. At uh, one point, like uh, Oko was played a lot. Minsk was a two of, but with show and tell, it's just kind of leaning the deck a little bit leaner in terms of aggression. Uh, Jingon the Companion. Activated abilities, graveyard hate, show and tell hate, enter the battlefield effects, uh, artifact enchantment, catch all removal, test of talents is also very good against control decks or show and tell, and then Oko for the grindier matchups. Then go to five color window to 76%. So this deck here, uh, it's kind of two cheat into play combo elements. So you have the Winota package, a lot of cheap dorks that can ramp you, find you your Winota. Or like ramp you into Winota, then attack to trigger Winota. Winota could then hit like Agent of Treacheries is your big one, but uh, Boromir shuts off some of the show and tell things with Omniscience. Grizzle Hunt Master can let you pitch a creature and then go fetch creatures from your sideboard. But then you also have the Natural Order package where you can Natural Order into Traxa, Crater Hoof, or Galta. And what's kind of cool is you can if you have like Agent of Treacheries in hand, you can Natural Order on say like turn three get Galta into play, dump the Agent of Treacheries into play, and then like steal your opponent's lines or stuff like that. Uh, your sideboard's an interesting mix of cards. The Bomac Courier is an interesting one that can be fetched, just some card advantage. Deafening Silence for Storm matchups, Giant Killer's removal, Artifact Enchantment hate, Activated Abilities, Graveyard hate, some life gain, Voice of Resurgence will come in against a Control or Heavy Removal-based matchups. Uh, so you have some Arkans in here, another Boromir to shut off combo, Winota again to be found, and then anything that's doing like sacrifice effects, you can bring Yasharn in. Yasharn does shut off fetch lines, uh, so keep that in mind uh, when you're playing it out, because you can't play pay life and it's symmetrical, so it also impacts you. Then we go to Show and Tell, 73%. So this was the highest win rate version of the deck. Uh, there's a couple versions with like more copies of Born of the Winds, uh, but this is the Fae of Wishes. Veil of Summer was the card I was trying to think of. Um, so this version here is interestingly not on the Shared Summonings plan. Uh, so that one there, I'd probably still play a copy of Shared Summonings in the sideboard. So how it works is if you have Shared Summons in the sideboard, you show and tell for Omniscience, and then you cast Fae of Wishes, you get Shared Summonings. With shared summonings, you get the other copy of Fae of Wishes and Atraxa. The Fae of Wishes gets you your approach the second sun, and then you Atraxa to get the other, like the approach of the second sun from your library. Uh, Born of the Wind lets you do it at instant speed through various types of removal. 
uh, kind of keeping in that mind. Otherwise, it's just like a Salti kind of dig for your combo. You also have Mastermind's Acquisition that can serve as a way to find some of the combo pieces. Fatal Push for removal against the more aggressive decks or like Hate Bears, Mystic Repeal. Uh, it can be used in the mirror. You can put it there, uh, Omniscience behind. Activated abilities, counter spells, hate pieces, uh, another card that's good in the mirror because split second goes on the stack, you can blow up their omniscience before they cast Born into the wind. Necromantia for combo hate, and then Ugin is just a big big spell that can also be cheated into play. Actually, no, you can't. Not Planeswalker. I guess just a ramp effect, or when you already have omniscience out, you can play Ugin, sweep up the board type thing. I I would probably find space, maybe cut a cross and grip, and then play shared summonings. Just play the combo version. We then go to a pretty interesting one. So this is Jund Breach. So it's basically the Rakdos Breach deck main board with some copies of Deathrite Shaman instead of the Regavans. Interestingly, as well, Once Upon a Time helps you find your pieces uh, needed for the combo, and then so you do your Breach Plan game one. Uh, Self mill, cast on the road breach, demonic intent. Interestingly, no demonic tutor in this version. I would probably find space for demonic tutor. Uh, you kind of keep looping Stitcher Supplier or use the uh, surveil effects with Dragon Rage Chandler, fill your graveyard, and eventually cast Tendrils of Agony to kill your opponent. What's interesting with this one is post board, you just shift into shadow. So you take out your combo pieces and you bring in Death Shadow, Scourge, Inti, and Regaven, and now you're just like an aggressive deck. So they brought in all this graveyard hate that doesn't really seem relevant to you anymore. Uh, and then you can just kind of keep pushing the issue. The one thing I would probably say, this deck's still pretty soft to show and tell in any case. You might want Roiling Vortex in the side. Uh, it seems like something that can just come in against the show and tell matchup. It also helps the kind of approach of Shadow. In all honesty, I would probably trim like one copy, one copy, and then maybe a copy of Scourge, and then just play like three Vortex, and then just kind of shift the plan like that, which could be interesting. Then going to Grixis Shadow. So this is probably the list I was going to play, or like a, a similar to it, uh, if not play like the team or mid-range decks that I played in the past. Um, this one here, you get access to Spell Pierce main. I would probably be looking in this kind of format, maybe upwards of three, uh, trimming down on a copy of Regavan in place. But your Bowmasters, Scourge, Expressive Iteration provide some card advantage. Drown in the Locks, flexible, both removal as well as Counterspell. Uh, with this version here, it's actually interesting because they're splashing white. Uh, the white allows you to have Veto Axis, Fracture, Lavinia. Uh, as well as deafening silence and then vanishing verse as well. So a lot of kind of hate pieces. Uh, invasive surgery is another card that can be uh, brought in against show and tell. Uh, if you have delirium, you get to kind of strip every copy out of their library. Alpine Moon for Field of the Dead, uh, One Ring kind of decks or just cheap creature decks also have that availability kind of mixed in. You see the Roiling Vortex in this one, Unlicensed Hearse as well and then Stone of Eric, which is really good. You might also want um, Graph Digger's Cage in sideboards. If Yogg's picking up popularity, it shuts off their ability to tutor from their library. So that's kind of a, a nice card to have access to in the 75 as well. Field of the Dead. So the biggest kind of update is they're on full for Archdruid's Charm. This gives you a main board answer beyond Beseju for Blood Moons, it gives you some value, fight effects as well, and then can also tutor you up specific lines. Core of the deck, play these dorks early, ramp, hit natural order into your primeval titan, or just naturally ramp with primeval titan. You have a utility box of 30 lions. Uh, Field of the Dead, the most notable, lets you uh, make a bunch of zombies, kind of kill them that way there. You can also tutor for titan of industry and crater hoof behemoth. Cage for anything cheating into play, notably cage, Shuts off your natural order, so you can't natural order. Counter spells and black base removal, and then you have the removal package get lost, as well as rule of law, which can be brought in um, as a tax style effect. Then go to Jun mid range, 61%. So this is pretty much like stock Jund. Uh, your disruption pieces, various removals, kind of grind them out. Questing Druid, Lelia, Jar Sulfur card advantage, Minsk on the top end. 
Um, I played like this version. I think this is Natsos version. I don't. I didn't like the restless vents in the deck. I finally came into play tap too many. I just play high with the Eye Tyrant. To be honest, it hurt me more than it benefited me. Um, Jengantha, and then you have basically just various disruption pieces: Graveyard Hate, Sweepers, Blood Moon. Again, I would probably look uh, at least a Stone of Erich. Uh, with Yogg picking up, it would be something you want to take a look at. Uh, and then I realized I didn't have Yogg. Where is the Yogg deck? I will. This is going to drive me crazy. <laughs> there we go. Sorry about that. Yog. I forgot to click that one. Uh, so Yog's at 68%. So this has kind of got two angles of attack. You have the che Cheese into play like a Traxa on turn three with Greater Hoof Behemoth. You have Yogmoth as well. Yogmoth with the combination of like Young Wolves can apply counters to each other to nullify the Undying. You have things like Hapatra that can generate creatures. Uh, the Agatha Soul Cauldron can kind of put the Yawgmoth ability on other creatures. So if they have like Needle, you can get around it that way. Eventually what you want to try to do is find Blood Artist and then just keep looping your creatures. You can Machine Gun. It's very good against small creature decks. You get into life, then, then drain them in the process there. Uh, Court of Calling helps you find combo pieces as well as like Natural Order finding you some pieces uh, once upon a time as well. And then you're just kind of like a mid-rangey shell. You got Bowmasters, Deathrite kind of mixed into there. You can also just cheese out like Crater Hoof Behemoth for a lot of damage. Uh, removal, Artifact Shaman Hate, Activated Abilities, Counters. Lavinia can be brought in against Show and Tell. Uh, you have Graveyard Hate, Artifact Enchantment Hate, Grind Value with Elvish Chorus, and then Removal with Pile On. And then lastly, just want to show it. Um, so this was a list that Aspiring Spike brought. They came in second in the Creator Clash. Uh, this deck's probably very hard to navigate, hence the win rate, um, but it is a Surveil Breach deck. So you're leveraging Thoughtbound Phantasm gets bigger every time you Surveil, and if it has three or more counters on it, it can attack as though it didn't have Defender. So you're leveraging things like the Dragon Rage Chandler to Surveil to put power into it. Uh, consider also Surveils. You have Enhanced Surveillance. Um, so you may look at two additional cards each time you Surveil. And then you can exile it and shuffle your graveyard into your library. So it's basically just kind of powering it up. What you're basically able to do is through Breach, uh, mill over your entire deck, and then cast Thassa's Oracle to win, or just beat down with creatures that way there. Mainly a blue-red deck that's kind of like a control deck with Source to Plowshare as additional removal. You also have the Surveil lands in this to give you added value. Luris Companion, and then a lot of matchups, you can just become a control deck. That wins when like the Thassa's Oracle combo is not relevant. You can win with like Dragon's Rage or Thoughtbound, Phantasm. Counter spells, disenchants, more removals, test the talents for the combo decks all kind of mixed in. Zip of the week. Let me know what you've been playing, what you've been enjoying, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.